So these two guides outline my entire process for creating dungeons and drawing dungeons. So I thought it'd be fun to use both of them to create a dungeon and show the entire process from start to finish. So let's jump into Flick Silverpin's Guide to Exploring Dungeons. This book is basically a collection of questions and inspiring random tables that you can roll on to help you generate ideas for building a, a dungeon adventure. So using 2d6, I'm just rolling on each of these tables and writing down the results that sort of spark my imagination. And really, I'm just answering questions that will explain what this dungeon is all about. Stuff like, where is the dungeon located? Who lives there? What kind of treasure and obstacles the players will find when they explore it? So I rolled stuff like this dungeon is an abandoned sewer. There is a froglin explorer searching for something. Now I rolled lycanthrope as one of my roles, but since that's what I used for the map inside the next guidebook, I've decided to do something different. So in this dungeon, there's gonna be a bunch of unfriendly giants that are trying to seek shelter inside these abandoned sewers. There's some sort of cave and vault, a pit and a camp. There's a death curse going on. Once I have this list of questions answered, I have a pretty good idea of what's going on in this place and how I can construct an adventure out of all of these randomized elements. Now this Exploring Dungeons guide has more advice on what to do next to fill out your dungeon. If you're just writing up a dungeon, it's got more info in there for you, but I'm excited to get to drawing. So we're gonna put this guide down and I almost hit myself in the face. So let's jump into Flick Silverpin's Drawing Dungeons. Now this guide explains tools to use and how to plan your dungeon layout, starting with a sketch and filling the dungeon with cool, simple icons. But for this video, I wanna draw a big dungeon map. So I've got this pad of big 26 by 32 inch grid paper that I just love to draw on. I've got a link down in the description to where you can find some. And I think this paper is absolutely perfect for drawing big dungeon maps or battle maps and throwing it right down on your game table. Now usually I would suggest planning out your dungeon on a separate sheet of paper, maybe a smaller sheet of paper before jumping right into drawing, but I'm going to start with a pencil and just lightly plan out this dungeon on this grid paper. I just want to have fun drawing this dungeon, so I'm not being too much of a stickler about what rooms go where and stuff, but I am keeping the story of this place in mind. These giants living in this abandoned sewer and this froglin explorer who's in here searching for something valuable. If you're making your own dungeon, it might help you to make a list of rooms. In fact, that's one of the suggestions I make in both of these guidebooks. But you know, this is all advice, so you can and use what you want to use and leave what you want to leave. And just like the videos I make on this channel, these guidebooks are meant to be as much about inspiration as they are about instruction. So that being said, my dungeon is all planned out in pencil and now I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit more and instead of drawing all of the interior elements of this dungeon, I'm gonna go straight into inking the dungeon walls. Now for this map, I'm gonna be using these big, huge Posca markers. These are paint pens what I actually used to illustrate this mural behind me. I've got this light blue PC-17K chisel tip 15 millimeter paint marker. That's a mouthful. And I'm just using this sucker to fill in all of the negative space on this map, like all of the areas that the players won't be able to, to go. The like solid earth of this map is gonna be the light blue color. And really I'm just tracing around the pencil sketch areas and leaving the interior of this dungeon blank. Now the really cool thing about this big huge marker is that it takes no time at all to fill up this space. Now you can absolutely use whatever kind of tools you want for this process. Crayola markers, Sharpies, crayons, paint, whatever. But I do recommend if you are filling in a large area like this, a bigger, wider tipped marker will help you speed things up. Okay, now that all of the negative space is filled in, I am going to draw the wall outlines in a black Posca marker, a PC7M bullet shaped 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter Posca pin. All joking about the ridiculous names aside, I love this bullet-shaped 
pen. It's so fun and smooth to draw with. It makes this perfectly bold, thick black outline. And at this one inch scale map, it is perfect for drawing walls and borders and outlines. Honestly, I feel like Posca should just sponsor me at this point because I talk about these stinking markers so much and I love them. But yeah, this process is actually really simple. I'm just adding in a line where the blue meets the grid and I'm not worried about the lines being super straight or anything. I'm just freehanding it. In fact, I'm actually trying to make it look a little more wavy and wobbly because I'm drawing a, an abandoned sewer, right? So the line shouldn't be perfectly straight and clean. And seriously, drawing at this scale is so much fun. Like as, as you're drawing, you can picture the miniatures being put down in this map and all the fun adventures that you're gonna have playing on the, the map that you're creating. I just love this stuff. I love it, I love it. Okay, next step is just to erase some of these pencil lines. I'm just using a simple white vinyl eraser and this grid paper erases pencils really awesomely. I do wish this grid paper was a little bit thicker because I'm using these Posca paint pens and, and putting a lot of ink down on the paper. It is warping and getting a little bit wavy, but that's nothing you can't fix just by throwing a few heavy RPG books on top of it and letting it sit for a little bit. Now at this point with the negative space filled in and the walls outline, I think you could totally throw this map down on the game table and have an awesome time exploring this dungeon with your players. But if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm gonna take it a step further and fill it in with some fun details. Now my favorite part of the Drawing Dungeons guide is all of the examples of easy to draw icons that you can populate your dungeon with. It shows you how to draw really simple doors and stairs and all kinds of furniture and lots of other stuff. And a lot of these icons are very practical to, to go ahead and show in your dungeon. So placing the doors and the archways, the stairs and slopes and changes and elevation and stuff. All of that goes a really long way in making your map super readable and understandable for your players so they can clearly see where there is a, a locked door and where there is a hallway they can just continue down. But I think these icons also add a lot of interest and character. And I think if you keep it simple, like how I'm drawing on this map and how I'm showing in the Drawing Dungeons guide, you can absolutely still throw this kind of map down in front of your players and I find that it actually gets them even more excited to explore. You know when they see a giant throne sitting in the center of the dungeon they're gonna want to go see what that's all about and, and explore and find out the story of this place, even more than if it was just a blank dungeon. And these really simple little drawings go a long, long way. So just by adding these little dots all over the place, it shows that this dirty, grimy sewer is filled with debris and rubble. And none of the drawing in this guide is anything complicated or difficult. If you can draw a line, a dot, a circle and a rectangle, you can absolutely draw everything that I'm drawing on this map. And after watching this video, if you think you need more help, I suggest checking out the Flick Silver Pins Guide to Drawing Dungeons. I'm really proud of this book. I just put it up in my shop. It's a great way to support this channel and it really explains how easy and fun it is to draw dungeons. Okay, so the last steps in the guide show you how to add a grid and texture to your map, but we've already got the grid drawn on the map because we're using this awesome blue line grid paper and I've already taken care of the texture by adding in the blue negative space background. So at this point, I've gone through all of the steps in both of these guidebooks. It took me about an hour and a half to roll up the concept, plan everything out, and draw this map that I think is ready to throw down on the table. All I have to do now is grab a few monster stats and abilities, name some NPCs, maybe come up with a few magic items, and I will be ready to play. Okay, let me know what you think of this map down in the comments. Check out Flick Silver Pin's guide to exploring dungeons and drawing dungeons. Both are linked down in the description. I hope this video inspired you to try creating your own dungeon and drawing it too. I'm never gonna stop talking about how fun and rewarding and easy it is to do this stuff. So I really hope you give it a shot. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!